So now we got our rocker arm support shafts all done with our rocker lockers in them. And now we're going to go ahead and start putting the top in what's left together on our black trike project. Uh, we're hoping to move along on it and uh, get the thing going pretty soon and have it ready for spring. So today we're going to put these in. We've wiped and cleaned everything out. Our arms have been oiled and cleaned up when they were put together. And this is the rear one as we marked the rear on the back so we could tell which one was for what. So we're going to get ready to torque these down and quite often they're hard to reach in there especially under there to get a torque wrench in. So we've made up like a three inch extension for this and we've just cut off a nut head and put the socket on there. The three inch extension allows us to reach in there and get what we want to get at. And by doing the calculations for your uh, extension, there's lots of them online, but you basically take the, the torque that you want multiply that by the length of your wrench, divide that by your length of your wrench plus the extension, which would be 15 in this case, and that'll give you it. So we're looking at about 14.5 is, uh, is where we're set. So we're gonna go around and try and torque these up evenly. We've snugged them down pretty even. And you always have to keep the extension straight. You can't pull on it on an angle. The torque readings won't be true. And one in the back last. So we're 14 and a half. What we're shooting for is between 18 and 20. So we're gonna crank this up, back up. To around 20, 18, 19, 20, right in there. And just, just to show, to double check, this should click before we move it. See? So we have the correct torque applied by using the extension to get in there. Um, these are really handy little rigs and they can be made up pretty easy out of a flat piece of metal. You know, cut your socket in half, weld half on here, half on here. Uh, a handy dandy little thing to get in there because they're always a pain for many of the motors uh, to reach in there and do that. So we're going to go along and put our other one in. Always making sure when you put these on, there's a little o-ring in here uh, and that's in the bottom for your breather. So don't leave it out. Front ones you can get in there, the rear ones that are a little tricky, and you can wiggle them in if you move the wiring harness uh, to get them started. Tighten, 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 tighten. So go and tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Hug them down. We need a little extension. I'm going to turn this back. Oops. All right. Now we have those all torqued down into place. We're going to put these uh, new style breathers in. And these are your sort of umbrella valves here for it. And uh, they just slide in there. They've already come from the factory with Loctite on them. Now we've got our small ratchet uh, for inch pounds and we have it set to around 110 inch pounds.
says 90 to 120, so just kind of shooting the gap there. Quite gonna get that on there. So we'll have to get a little wrench so we can reach back in there. A little three-eighths wrench. There, so I'll have our rocker arms all torqued and everything's in there the way it should be. I'm going to leave these open right now because I'm going to put the uh, push rods and all that stuff in and I'd like to have it so that I can see it and I know it's right. Uh, I like to see my valves move up and down. It just covers. I can put them on when I'm done. So I think we'll go on to that. We'll take this breather out of the way here. We've just got it mocked up so that we made sure everything fit properly and then we'll come back. It's time to uh, put our new cover on because once I get the lifter blocks in then I like to pour a bunch of oil down inside the uh, cam case to make sure that the oil pump in that has a, has a chance when it gets started. We'll just take this one off. We have new Comtech gaskets. Uh, I like their gaskets for a lot of stuff. Some things I don't, some things I do. We cleaned our timing cover out and cleaned off all the edges where we had powder coating on them. These are going to be 125 to 155 inch pounds. We'll go somewhere in the middle there, about 140, I guess. Lock tight them all up ahead of time. Okay. I don't like to tighten them with a screw gun. I like to get them where they should be. Now we're going to go along and torque them uh, to what they should be. Starting with this one. All right, now we're all torqued up. Try to keep from scratching the thing. So the next step is to uh, put our lifters in and our lifter blocks. So we're just gonna get this taped off section out of here, making sure everything's clear, clean. That ought to help a little bit. Give our oil pump a fighting chance. Now, we've had our lifters soaking for the best part of the afternoon in this oil. Try and impregnate some into them. These, uh, each individual lifter has a small hole in it. And that hole faces inboard towards the center because that's where the oiling holes are making sure our hole is facing in and that our flats are there. Second hole we're going to have facing inboard so this hole will face the motor. Once those are in place then we take our, our little pin and we drop it down in there and that locks them in place. 
being careful not to drop it down that hole. Once again, making sure that the little hole is facing out in this case. And last but not least, one left. And the hole faces inboard. Sometimes if the pin doesn't want to fall down in there, you can just turn the lever, lifter ever so slightly um, and then they will fall into place. I put this in here just because I had to freak with it and I don't want anything going down that hole. It's the last thing we want. <laughs> Next will be our gaskets and our lifter blocks. And the gaskets have two little tangs on them there. And the reason for that is to help to lock that pin down in there. Use these little ball end sockets, which are great. Kind of a ball end on them. It enables you to reach in there on an angle and get at those ones. I would refrain from torquing them because you can snap the ball off pretty easy. These need to be snug down in there. They say 90 to 100 pounds, but it's almost impossible to get at the back ones. So to ensure that I'm not over torqued in the front, I like to do them all with the Allen wrench. And I can go by feel and know that they're all the same. So we're going to go along and get things ready and we're putting the O-rings in for the lifter blocks. All these little O-rings and stuff are important everywhere because one little leak will certainly pump a lot out. There you go. Now we've got four that got to go up in here. And it's easy to forget that. I've done it myself before. Go along, get your push rods in, get everything thick, and it's just fine and dandy. And huh, there's oil pouring out there. Guess what? forgot to put that up in there in its place. So you got to make sure that you do that. If you don't try things you don't know. If you don't know you don't learn. All right. It's all four of those in. So we'll take our push rod tube. We've cleaned everything out and we put it in in order as it should be with the spring this little washer which often gets lost and left out and the uh, the o-ring you need that washer for the spring support I always like to take these and put oil on them sometimes if they're dry and you got them under a little bit of pressure and they don't want to turn these are easy install ones which have the small end on it so you can put them up in there. So today we're going to put our push rods in. We've turned the motor over so that we're on compression stroke on the front cylinder top dead center so both of our lifters are down at the bottom in their uh, in their blocks. So we're going to start with the intake one first because it's uh, easier to get at in the back. I always like to put a little bit of stuff on the ends of the push rods and up in top. Just makes them slide in a little bit easier. And it keeps them from being dry on the initial startup. 
need to get them right up into the into the push rods there to get them started. Our little elastic band and our push rod clip. Once you get it started down in the end, you can push it over a little bit to just kind of hold the center section in place. Okay, that looks good there. You need to pay special attention to your push rods uh, from the manufacturers. We're going to put a mark on these. Um, lots of manufacturers have different threads on them. You have 32s, uh, all kinds of different threads on them. So pay attention to the manufacturer specs on those. These particular ones are telling us that they want them at two and a half turns. So we're going to take our little R16s here, hold that, and we're going to go two and a half complete turns. There's one. There's two. Our half. Holding these in place with your bottom wrench and your top, and we're going to snug up the nut. That's one. Now we'll go along and do our second one. Some lube on both ends. I like to lube that top ring. Always double check and make sure you've got that top ring up in there. I'm sure everybody's put their push rod tubes together at a different time and forgot to put the top ring in. Once you fired it up, within a matter of minutes, she's spurting oil everywhere. It's an easy thing to do. So now our longer push rod is going to go in to the exhaust one, because it's a longer reach. And once again, we use all our wrenches. There. Now we'll just wait till these bleed down until we can spin them nice and freely. And once that happens, then we'll go along and do the rear ones and have them set. Do not Try and go and turn it over before you set them um, because you could bend a push rod or bend a valve or anything like that, they say. Although you'd have to be coming onto it, but make sure that these are bled down and that they can spin freely in your hands before you move on to the rear ones. So we've let these push rods sit for about a half an hour now and let them bleed down the way they're supposed to. Um, you got to be able to spin them with your fingers and that's the whole plan. That's what you're trying to get before we move on to the rear ones. And then we'll move on and do the rear ones. So let's have a look and see. So as you see right here, I can easily spin those with my fingers. Same with the rear ones in here. So we know they're bled down and they're sitting there just like they're supposed to be. So now we're going to go along, set the rear cylinder up to top dead center on compression and put our push rods in and do the same procedure as we did to the front one. This is 
one. Just gonna mark our push rod. Now we're just going to let these bleed down before we move anything. And then once they've bled down, we we'll roll it over nice and slow to make sure nothing's clicking and clacking. And like I said, I like to leave the tops off so I can have a look at what's happening there uh, before I button it up. When it's underneath and unseen, you always wonder about it. But if you can see it, everything's moving, everything's fine, and we can button them up. So we're just going to have to wait a while for that and uh, take it from there. So now we've checked our push rods here and we know that they're all spinning the way they should be. So we'll unhook our keeper. This is just a handy little thing to have. Just an elastic band with a paper clip bent over. Works great for holding them up. One of the hardest parts a lot of the times is getting these things up into the rubbers. So I always like to put a little bit of oil on them. Yeah, it might drip a little tiny bit, but uh, when they have to slide up into the keeper, into the O-ring, you don't always want to go there. You'll feel them when they pop up into place like that. Then you know they're seated. They could fool you, but if you look up in the head, you'll find that they're quite a ways up in there especially with new rubbers. Take a small screwdriver on top of the keeper there. Just kind of push them in. Go back and make sure that one's stayed up in there when you popped it into the bottom one. These are a little harder because they get the skulls on them. Makes them a little awkward to look around. Oh, let me see if we're gonna have a problem with that one. Yeah. Lots of times they'll catch on one of the upper fins up in here. So you have to be really careful to get it down. that one clip up on that fin. No, we're too far. We're just too far. Sometimes they can be quite fussy. So when you're going to do your valve adjustment on your push rods, um, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but finding top dead center is the most important thing to find. And I've had guys say, well, how do you find top dead center? Having the primary case off certainly makes it a lot easier and I can turn the motor off. Having the tops off, I can see the tops of the rocker arms. But if none of that is the case and you're turning things over, rolling the back wheel over to get yourself in place. Um, it's hard to do by yourself, it can be done. Um, but this is a simple way to show you how. I'm gonna start by turning the motor over. And while we do it, we're just gonna put our finger over the spark plug hole. There you can hear the sound of it sucking down in. As I turn my, fing turn my motor over and have my finger over the hole, I can hear the compression coming up. So we just take a screwdriver, a little tiny one, and we stick it in there. Just be careful that you don't get your screwdriver wedged in there. You'll see the screwdriver rising. Coming up, coming up. 
Now I'm at the top and it goes back down. So we're just going to reverse it a ways and try it again. And we're at the top. Right there. So that's a very simple method to show you how to find top dead center. You can do the same on each cylinder. You'll also see the valves moving here. These ones will be stationary because it's on compression stroke. Um, but it's very simple. Just take your time, feel it out, you know, put your screwdriver in there lightly so you don't mark the top of the piston up and you won't, regardless of what people say. Just drop it in there, nice and slow, nice and slow, find yourself at top dead center.